Hey everybody, we're back with another Thatcher walkthrough. I know it has been a long while. Um, I've got some video that was recorded uh, back uh, middle of last year. You'll hear some references to a recent trip to Oshkosh. Uh, this footage was filmed about August of 2015. At that time, I had about 430 hours. I'm now at about 485 hours. Um, I know not a lot, but we have started building the tail empennage, the horizontal uh, stabilizer spars built, um, but you'll get some information about building the tail, um, fuselage, and some information about the brakes. Um, we're doing this a little lo-fi uh, here at the moment. Uh, I'm in the middle of packing everything. We're doing a, uh, a big transmission. I'm getting ready to retire from the FAA in a couple months, going to work in private industry, and uh, also bought a house in North Carolina. So instead of one mile from tech shop, I'm going to be about 200 miles from tech shop. Hopefully that won't have a significant impact on the build. Most of the large stuff has been fabricated um, and uh, I can get a lot of stuff done with hand tools uh, working uh, in my basement in my house. I don't have a garage yet. I'm going to have to build one of those eventually. Uh, and the airplane will stay at tech shop uh, initially um, on a waiting list for a hangar at the uh, airport in Elizabeth City where we are, we've moved. So uh, here, enjoy the uh, section here and we'll be back uh, momentarily. Hey everybody, Jason Stahl with another Thatcher walkthrough and about time, it's been several months uh, since I've been uh, in contact and uh, made a video, but what prompted me to do this was coming across a task that I wish I had a video that I could watch to do figure out the geometry. So while I have uh, been out of touch, I have been uh, busy and not idle. You can see I've got the tail built out. And I start to get the controls run through. The task that I really prompted me was fitting this turtle deck over the baggage compartment. And uh, we'll get to that in a moment, but first let's talk about some of the things that I've done in the meantime. Uh, we see we got a fuel valve here. This is a Newton SPRL valve. Um, it's got a, it's a ceramic disc style. It's larger, and the one thing that is a little awkward about it is that the fittings require a fairly bulky area, hence the housing I've got in there. Uh, one p solution would be in spending, throwing a, even a little bit more money, and that would be using an Andair uh, valve and you can get those in several different configurations. One with 90 degree fittings on the back that would uh, take up a little less space. We're gonna see how this works. I think there should be still plenty of room. I can use that housing to, uh, uh, to house a switch or indicator lights or something on there. So it's not gonna be wasted. I don't think it's gonna be an issue, but we'll see when I'll be able to uh, sit in there for the first time, which you really can't sit in it until you've got the sides riveted in. Uh, the strength is not in the fuselage yet. If I sat in there, I'd start popping clecos, bending uh, and uh, bending things. So you gotta get it all sheeted. Then I'll be able to sit in and see what we've got. Um, you can see I've got that here. I've uh, started fabbing up a mock-up of the dashboard, the instrument panel, dashboard, right. Uh, instrument panel. I went to Oshkosh uh, two weeks ago and uh, I have made an order of my avionics. I should be getting them next week. Uh, we'll uh, sit down and we'll talk about those, uh, what I decided to go with. Uh, and there's, I have had a little bit of a change since I initially started, especially on the circuit breaker side, but uh, that's going to be a future episode. So let's get back to their turtleneck. I want to show you a little thing that I did here on the baggage uh, section. You can see we've got an English wheel here at Tech Shop. Uh, and the English wheel has some dies for uh, rolling uh, formers in there. So I just I rolled these uh, little ridges in here just to keep this from oil canning. It actually keeps it from um, clunking around. Uh, it doesn't it gives it a little bit of extra strength? But the most thing about it is that it just it, it was uh, going to prevent a little sagging. It was going to prevent it from making noise when it oil cans uh, in here. Really kind of a neat little setup uh, in there. So I've got that uh, in there riveted. Uh, so we've come back here, I've got the top. I did this in sections. Uh, I promised Tech Shop that I would not have this locked into a jig for uh, a long period of time. I committed to do it in 48 hours. And uh, what I did is I test fit this about four or five times, uh, set it up in the jig, kind of fit bulkheads in there, uh, and then tore it down and threw it back into my storage area uh, in there. So when it came time to do this, I uh, coordinated, uh, we cleared out some area, I locked it into the jig, 
I took a day off work so I could do it in midweek and got it done in about 15, 16 hours worth of work total over two days. Um, was able to get it out and just in the bottom skin uh, section on the top skin was I uh, didn't have time to do that but the bottom skin let it hold its own weight although it was still pretty flimsy that F12 uh, bulkhead was able to flip around uh, well not flip around but uh, move around a little bit uh, more and as soon as I got this top skin in here um, at this point when I did that last week um, I set it back on the stands re-leveled everything uh, clamp this in here and, and got this vertical and then cinch the uh, top turtle deck uh, for the rear section down and let lock the geometry in. This thing is not going anywhere. It is just sturdy as all get out. So we've got the, this in here. We're uh, getting ready to put in the elevator uh, tube. This, uh, the elevator push rod is gonna to have to be about nine feet long. And as you know, Dave spe tried to spec everything for eight foot or less, except for a couple of sheet metal goods. Um, he, did, he did put a splice in here. There is gonna be a splice when the uh, uh, rod runs back through here, through the, uh, the, the FMN 10 bearings, goes back here. There'll be a splice somewhere back in here. You just kind of uh, slip a tube over it and you rivet it, uh, four rivets on each side of the joint is what he did. And uh, that gets you the length you need. Also, these rudder cables, these need to be drilled, uh, holes drilled in through the bulkheads, and uh, the cables run through. That'll keep these from slapping around um, in there. And when you get them um, clamped up onto rud the rudder horn, if you didn't have it and had that flexibility, any little bit of side load would create a bunch of pull on there. It's like a force multiplier. And you could bend a, a control horn or rip the... Uh, the cable, slip the cable out of your, uh, your lock nuts, and uh, there goes rudder control. So you want to make sure those get uh, fed through holes that you drill into the bulkhead. I'll be doing those uh, quick, uh, soon here. I don't have the longitudinal stiffeners, stiffeners put in yet, as you can see, and then I've got to also build a battery box back here. Um, a battery door gets built onto the other side. Uh, there are plans for that on the electrical sheet. Uh, a door gets put in right here to access the battery. You could probably look and check that nut uh, from there too, but you can also look from the back there for inspections uh, annual and, and such. Everything on the sheeting was pretty much just cinch it up with straps and uh, you know clamp it and rivet it and such. Um, this was a different matter. Um, you cannot get rivets back in here, so it re re uh, relies on everything being located in the right spot to hold the gap in here. It's, it's opened up a little bit. I can get this gap closed a little bit more. And uh, the, what I did is that you'll notice, first of all, the grain on this runs fore aft. The grain on this runs side to side. That's because the distance along this edge here is more than 48 inches and you can't do it width wise in there. So your four foot width uh, goes this direction uh, in here. So I cut a, a piece long enough set it on here it stuck way out over here i drew some really quick uh, trim lines on the front and on the bottoms uh, and trimmed it so that i could work with something this is the straight edge of the original sheet you can see that it angles back it will still fit you do not need to trim run this uh, into a concave cut uh, you can leave this just the straight uh, factory edge and you you can uh, get it fit up it's not a not a problem uh, you'll notice that you will be should be able to get a few rivets here on the side where it lays flat, but then as this angle comes up, um, you can't get anything in here. It relies on everything else. The key was to find the right geometry to get this uh, gap to close up. And I think the best way is that when you've got this trim, after you've got it trimmed to shape and clamped in, drill and Clico on here, but stop um, about maybe five or six inches shy. This will slide a lot depending on this, this gap being open or closed. So um, get it locked onto the bulkhead here and on the other side likewise. And then I took uh, one of my ratchet straps, just hooked it in here, ran it back all the way to the tail and just cinched it back. So this closed, the gap closed up and uh, everything was laying flat the way I wanted it. Then I went through and drilled these and clicked them. Um, 
that uh, should be able to get you to get a nice tight fit there. Um, I can get this close to about a 32nd of an inch um, at, at when I get it strapped in there and when I rivet it, it'll, it'll hold it all in. So just uh, take your time with this. This was uh, probably about five hours worth of work uh, to get this done in here and, and right, but uh, it was well worth it. The tail itself was about, um, I'd say maybe 50 hours of work um, just the fact that I had to, you know, fit it and pull it apart and fit it and pull it apart over and over again. I've been asked to explain a little bit more about the brakes on the Thatcher. Uh, the Tracy O'Brien brakes are a little different unit. Instead of a rotor um, that's attached to the wheel and then a caliper attached to the landing gear leg, it's a unit that is basically all self-contained, attaches to the wheel strut with the rotor encased inside. It can spin freely until you put pressure on the hydraulic fluid and it clamps that down. It's basically just a bunch of tabs um, on the outside. The axle does go through the center. The four bolts attach the entire the axle and everything to the, the gear. The three bolts that uh, attach the two wheel halves together are, are provided by Tracy O'Brien and they have on the other side large uh, pins, hardened steel pins, that uh, as you slide the wheel on, those pins engage those tabs in the rotor and when you apply the brakes, it slows the rotor down and thus slows the wheel. Okay, well there you have it. I hope that uh, has been a help. Uh, look forward to a, another video soon uh, on building the tail empennage, give you some hints and some of the things I've discovered about that. So everybody take care and talk to you later.